So today we are going to talk about time and about digital technology and about how those two things correlate. But to keep expectation in check, this doesn't mean, unfortunately, that we are going to, to talk about the time travel or about the flux capacitor of back to the future. We are not quite there yet, although I hope that we get there in one of the next big things. What we are going to talk today about is real-time digital platforms. And talking again about the famous flux capacitor of Back to the Future, Back to the Future is only one of many movies about time travel. The, the last of them is Tenet, as far as I know, which I hope you had the chance to see before the confinement because it is really worth it. But the thing is that there are almost 400 movies and TV shows that, that talk about time travel, time bending, time slowing, time recovery. Why? Because time is an obsession for, for humanity. Uh, time is, is the only asset, in fact, that money cannot buy. And, and maybe that is the reason why we live obsessed to save every second that we can get. Our life is in many ways a competition to save seconds. We, we compete to be the first in line. We get angry if, if somebody tries to skip our line. We, we chase the bus arriving at the bus stop as is our, our life depending on, on catching it, it's true, and get hugely frustrated if we lose it. And we are willing to pay hundreds of euros in fines or even to risk our lives just to save a few minutes driving our cars. So we live in constant competition to save time. The, the delivery time is the most important value after cost of almost any product or service that we buy. That, that's correct. No? But the funny thing is that for some reason we have accepted, we have come to terms during years that these rules don't apply to the digital world for some reasons. During years, both providers of digital services and, and we as users have gotten used to the fact that online services are slow, are, are asynchronous, and there is no way to expect from an online service the same kind of response in terms of time that we get in real life. There is no way to expect real time. And when you think about it, in fact, uh, the opposite should be true, shouldn't it? We, we should demand from digital services more efficiency than, than in real life, because if you take out the human interaction factor, everything should be more efficient. But as I say, the reality, in fact, is different or, or has been different during the last few years. For example, take, take online shopping for years, we have been used to waiting days for an order to arrive. This was the normal thing. And, and you had also complex payment procedures, which you have to fill up a lot of forms, your name, billing address, billing information, everything, which made the whole experience a whole slower than, than in person in almost every way. And when you go into a physical shop, you select your things, you carry them to the checkout, you, you will fight bravely for your place in the line, you will unleash your rates to anybody who tries to skip it, you will fight for seconds. So the patience that you don't show, you don't have to wait a few more minutes in line in a physical shops turn to days in the digital world and we accepted that for some reason. So the same thing in, in online banking, we accept all, already today as a reality of life that bank transfers take days. Even bank clerks are able to tell you with, with a straight face how many days your wire transfer will take. And a wire transfer at, at the end of the day, if, if you take out all the security checks that of course are needed, is if you think about it, just a digital entry in a database and, and it takes days. Why? why? Why have we gotten used to this? Okay. And what to say about the, the other bank services like signing up for a new product or getting a duplicate of your credit card. Here we are no longer talking about days. We, we are talking about weeks. But again, we have come to terms with this fact of life and we accept it sheepishly. Or, or that's something that, that has been true almost until a couple of, of, of years or a few months ago. And all of that is when everything goes well, because we have also gotten used to the fact that in peak times, when everybody is trying to get tickets for a concert that just opened uh, or, or to get plane tickets with a special discount that you can get only at a particular time, it may well be impossible to get this. And this was, until now, a reality accepted in the digital world. You could not be in a hurry in an online services. Online services were not dependable. If you really need something, you call by phone or better jet, go in person to get it. And the problem here is that 
most companies have adopted this culture in the in their digital transformation and they have built their IT ecosystems and digital platforms around this level of expectations. This is what they think or they thought was good enough. And this suddenly has changed. During the last months, we have seen how suddenly this acceptance of a different time reality, so to speak, for the digital world has collapsed. And suddenly, all companies find themselves thrown into the middle of, of a race for, for time, a race for which many of them, in fact, are, are not prepared, that they don't have the proper car. And, and this is the challenge that we are going to discuss today. We, we are going to share the experience of Paradigma helping our clients to compete in, in this race. But before going into detail and, and, and sharing with you what, what we see and how, how they are doing, I think first it's important to understand the, the principles of what has changed, why this has been this change, what has motivated this disruption of the user perception of digital services in terms of time. And I think there are two main reasons for it. Uh, the first one, the first reason, and, and it's usual, and this is something that, that, uh, that, uh, that happens again and again, is the arrival on the scene of new players that have simply changed the rules of the game. And I'm sure that the first one that comes to everyone's mind right now is Amazon. Suddenly, when Amazon arrives, the whole shopping online process becomes a real-time experience. And digital is not only does, does not only catch up with the in-person experience, but in many ways it surpasses it. Just, just picture the process when you are uh, buying at Amazon. First, we enter Amazon website and we have at the beginning, just for starters, instant recommendations with a huge ratio of satisfaction, a huge ratio of success. Because Amazon makes every effort to know us in real time according to what, how we are feeling, what we have done today, better than our own families, from analyzing our behavior to our conversation with Alexa. So we no longer have to look for what we want because it comes to us. That's one point in favor of, of the digital experience against the physical experience. And then we have one click orders. If you like something, you click and you buy. No time lost, writing your address, your card, your bill information. That's another score for the digital experience because paying in person takes, in fact, longer. And we finally have the delivery itself. The delivery is so fast and so efficient that, as they like to say, uh, by the time you take an Amazon delivery off your porch, walk into your home, open your box, you've already spent nearly as much time handling the packets as all Amazon employees together. This is efficiency. And this is also happiness. I, I, I quote before delivering happiness because for the user, this is a sense of pure joy, pure happiness. In fact, recently this showed up in El Mundo Today that as most of or many of you know, is a satiric newspaper, very famous here in Spain. The news is, is of course made up that it could very well be true. And, and it said the phrase, your package is on the way, already surpasses I love you in the list of the most appreciated by Spanish people. And also over other mythical phrases like uh, this year, your tax result is a refund, uh, which until now was the top of the podium. Uh, where was it? it causes segregation of endorphins. I mean, this is also a, a joke, but in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, if all of this was, was true because the, on, the shopping, the online shopping experience, when, when it turns to real time, produces an instant satisfaction in the users that drives him even to buy more. Who, who has an experience this Black Friday frenzy in which you see instant deals going through your screen and, and you start clicking almost by instinct thinking, I, I will return that later if I don't need it, but I have to catch it, to catch it now. This is a whole new experience and, and psychologically is a whole different thing when, when you have almost real time or you have this experience that, that assimilates to, to real time. And Amazon knows it, of course. And when discussing the Amazon success with retail companies uh, some time ago here in Spain, there were those who, who were not worried at the time, at the beginning, when Amazon was selling books or small items, thinking that that Amazon would stay there. They, they would do very well with books and small items that they could never enter in the food distribution because of the logistic challenges of food, the cold chain, and so on and so forth. 
But then Amazon launches Prime Now, delivering food in an amazing under two hours window. And that's simply the last nail in the coffin of traditional online shopping experience. It, it suddenly throws every retailer in the, in the world in a race for which they are simply not prepared because they have built their own systems with a different level of user expectations in mind. And that, that's the drama, their, their challenge are now, right now. And it's not only an, uh, an issue of retail or, or, with, or only Amazon. Another player, would you know, you all know it, who has changed the rules of time is Netflix. They, they know from studies that they have just 90 seconds to convince the users they have something for them to watch. So what they do is they analyze constantly your behavior and they recommend content in real time. Even when you are still watching the previous show and it's about to end, they are already deciding what to recommend you. And to give you an idea of the importance that this has for them, more than 80% of the TV shows that people watch on Netflix are discovered through the platform's recommendation system. And it generates for them 1 billion revenue. So this is something that, that real time has brought into the table. And it's not only recommendations, what they are generating in, in real time. The streaming quality of, of the, the, the transmissions is constantly adapted to your personal conditions. And they are even able to predict it. So, so they are not only uh, being able to react in real time and adapting for each and every one of their users, they have raised the bar even more by moving into the future, which is really mind blowing. They are predicting what your quality will be and they are able to, to even anticipate to that reality that, that has not yet happened. So we are entering in the tenet territory, so to speak. And this is all in the digital world, which until just a few months ago was supposed to be a lot worse in terms of time than the real or in-person world. More example, there are in fact quite a lot of players that have changed the rules. To put a last example, we, we can mention Uber or Cabify that are able to, to adapt in, in real time their prices according to the demand. And again, you can easily see the importance that this has for them. But uh, I mean, there are, uh, as I say, uh, several significant players that has have changed the rules. But I mentioned before that there were two main factors in this launch of the digital race for time. The first is this, the arrival of these new players. players. And the second is the arrival of something which actually has been and is being much worse, which is COVID-19. In, in just a matter of, of weeks, we find ourselves suddenly confined in, in our homes and unprepared for it. Suddenly, we are scared to get out of the house, to run daily runs. Our life is upside down. We, we can no longer do in-person necessities, critical necessities for, for our lives, or, or we prefer not to do them in person because we are risking a lot. And we immediately turn to digital services instead. I mean, they have been there our whole life, and now uh, we turn to them, but but with a critical difference. We, we turn to them with a different look. This is no longer a leisure thing, a trivial activity to make the most of a rainy day, or a, or a Black Friday frenzy that nothing happens if if it fails because you simply lost one one buy or you lost one ticket. Suddenly, we are talking about essential needs that we cannot address in person and we cannot longer afford to wait. What happens? Mostly failure. E-commerce collapses and it is no longer funny for the user. It, it impacts our life squarely. We find ourselves, and I don't know if it has been your experience, it has been mine, setting our alarm clocks for three or four in the morning in the hope that we can get an order through the system and avoid the competition of, of other users. And as our frustration as, as, as user grows, our expectations have been changed forever because there are those who come up to the challenge and, and answer to those expectations. And once you go to that road, there is no coming back. In fact, uh, the result is that we no longer accept waiting. And this has been a a very quick change in a matter of months or, or at most uh, one year or something like that. Years of acceptance of slow digital processes turn into complaints and into rejection. Take, for example, the the US, the US election. This is a, I don't know, a, a, a historic process, a centenary process. For years, 
decades. Both, boats have been counted during days and they have like a fixed uh, period of time for everything. And there were no complaints. No, no year we have listened to complaints. But this year, the whole world is wondering how a technological power such as the US can't have results in the same night of the election like we do here in Spain, for example. But the thing is that our expectations are completely different. We can't go back from this. The new expectations of the user have been set and it is an inexorable process that has thrown everybody in the race for time. So what to do about this? We, we, talk, we for starters, can take a look of, about, uh, of how these new players are doing it. Some of them are digital natives. For example, Google has been doing this for years. I, I always tell the story through a story of how 15 years ago, when I was trying, or maybe I was trying to sell some application to a client, they would say, that, that's all great, very good, but I want it like Google, that is able to auto-complete what you are trying to write in real time. It never goes so slow, and it never fails. And it has the whole internet data indexed. So I guess that you will be able to do the same with your small application, won't you? And, and you know, I had to change the subject back then because back then it was magic. We, we didn't know how they were doing it. They, they had and they have had a 15 years head start and we cannot go back in time. So that is a dead end for, for everybody else. And by the way, and I was not so wrong back then because what Google did and what all these new players keep doing is a kind of magic trick and an illusion, but, but a very bright, a very ingenious one because in distributed computing, as you know, there is no such thing as real time. But as users, we have a perception of, of real time. Behind the scenes, what we have are very well thought architectural patterns and design that provoke this illusion. For example, we were talking before about Amazon and, and their one-click orders. You, you click and you get your, your thank you, your order is on the way message, and it gives you this endorphin kick. But the reality is that you have not yet paid and the order has not been yet processed. You, you will pay eventually. And if your card doesn't go through the system, then your order will not be processed. That's why you get sometimes the message that this order has been canceled or whatever. But the illusion of real time means everything for the user. And, and still near real time, but that, that should be your goal, is a huge challenge. So one way to go, digital natives, but, but that's behind the time. Another, going back 15 years, impossible. But not all these players were digital natives. Uh, take Amazon, for example, again. They took a different path. Not, not so long ago, Amazon was a quite traditional company from an IT point of view. But then one day, the Bezos wrote a communication to all the company, which today is known as the API mandate, telling everybody in the technical area to start working in a new radical way. And he finished his communication saying, anyone who doesn't do this will be fired. Thank you, have a nice day. This is another approach to change, but it is brutal. So it's not up to everybody, but you can't discuss the results. Amazon has today a full real-time AI-powered digital platform, which allows for every other automatic selection of warehouse, uh, recognition of defects, 15 seconds to assemble packages, and, and, and allows a click to ship time of uh, something like 15 minutes, which is really amazing. So that's another way to go. But at the end of the day, uh, the thing is that for 99% of the remaining companies, the solution is not as straightforward. They face a huge challenge. They are at the very beginning of a very long cloud technology adoption road, and the road ahead is hard. So what to do or some general tips, and then we will go into detail. First, we'll tell you what you shouldn't do. You, you shouldn't take an all or nothing approach, building a new platform from scratch and trying to jump on, in, on the way, chances are that you will fail. So as, as the saying goes, please don't try this at home. So that would be the, the first tip. But you also can jump to the other stream and, and settle for cosmetics, just for, for some digital washing, rewriting a few front-end applications and hoping that the user won't notice that, that underneath you have the same back office. You will fail with this approach also. So you have to evolve and you have to assume that during a long time, possibly years, your old IT ecosystem will have to live together with your new real-time digital platform. You have to prepare for this scenario, which is not at all an easy one. And at Paradigma, we, we have been helping our clients in this process for quite some time now. 
we want to share with you our experience. So Ruben, our, our technical director in Paradigma Barcelona, is going to tell you, to tell all of us what we usually find in our clients and how we usually are able to help them. So over to you, Ruben. Thanks, Jose. I'm going to try to share my screen. Okay, so I suppose that... Yeah, yeah, while watching your presentation, yep. Okay, perfect. So, as Jose has said, uh, before uh, helping customers, we first need to have a look at, uh, of how things are standing. So, we are going to have a look of how things are standing and how did we get there. So, at the beginning, things uh, for all systems are easy. So you start with one big monolith, maybe a mainframe, and all applications and processes are built against this system. Uh, here, what is written into this single database uh, is immediately available to, to read. So you put things in, you get things out. Uh, basically, this is real time. So at this stage, users are happy, you have real time, and, and things are really simple. But as everything in time, uh, as everything in, in life uh, gets, uh, things always get uh, complicated. So normally you never can do with only one system. So you need to grow. So you need to add more systems into the picture, maybe a CRM, a specialized ERP, a data warehouse, even maybe your company acquires another company and need to integrate new services. So basically, the more systems you integrate, the more complicated things get. For every system you need to integrate, you need to develop integrations for all the remaining systems. Basically, this means that uh, the growth of uh, integrations is exponential. So uh, one uh, try and tested uh, way to integrate these systems is uh, batch processes. So these batch processes basically are a process that runs at a scheduled time, normally at night, and uh, you update systems, you move systems for, uh, move data from one system to the, to the other. But at that moment, something happens and users begin to get data that is not real time anymore. The data is outdated. So processes are not real time. Basically, what uh, the user is reading from the systems, what the user is getting out from the system is yesterday's data. It's not uh, data from, from today. It's not fresh data. Uh, as Jose said before, a very common example are bank transfers. It uh, takes one or more days, at least in Spain. Uh, in Spain, it's like that. I used to live in the Netherlands and it was, uh, it was uh, the same day, but in Spain, uh, we need to wait some, a little bit more. So you need to, to perform a bank transfer. You need to, to wait some days, one, uh, two days. And basically, this is a limitation generated by the technology. This is not something that is, should be like that because uh, there's some uh, inherent uh, limitation. It's just the technology we are using. Even the, the funny thing here is that even the customer support of banks is aware of the of this schedule process. So normally, if you call a bank because you are worried about some transfer that is not getting there, they know what time the process is, uh, is going to run. And, and even at some banks, they even know the strange name of this process. So it's, it's something that uh, we've got used to. And, uh, and it's a little bit frustrating, but, but yeah, it's the way it is. A good measure of the prevalence of a technology in general is the market of tool around this technology. If you look, for instance, at the, if you do a, a Google search for ETL, you'll see that is a, a, a whole lot of, of tools uh, that uh, related to this uh, to these ecosystems. Basically, all the big um, database builders and even cloud providers have some kind of tool related to ETL, IBM, Oracle, Amazon, Azure, even the, the popular development framework Spring has the, this Spring Batch library. So, so with this, you can see that the prevalence of these kind of tools at company is really, really, really big. 
So also one uh, uh, one uh, important thing is that the, most companies, the proportion of online versus batch processes, this, these processes that are hidden, that run in, in batch, that run normally at night, is like an iceberg. So most of the logic of, of companies that uh, a lot of time is integration between these, these systems is executed at, uh, as batch processes that are scheduled to happen at a certain time of the day, normally at, at night. So as an example, we had a customer who had more than 14K daily scheduled processes to manage the integration. So it's 1,400, uh, sorry, 14,000. This is a lot of processes. This not only affects the obsolescence of data, so this not only means that you are not going to get fresh data, but also uh, this also had a lot of problem uh, related to data governance. This, this data is really difficult to manage. Is uh, this all these processes for this 14,000 is just almost impossible to know what they are doing. So uh, even with all these problems, all these uh, these delays and this uh, this problem with with this governance of the uh, of this this processes so all this data just going in and out companies have felt comfortable for years working with this kind of technology because basically if it's working don't touch it so uh, the problem now as jose said is that suddenly they need to fight for survival in this race of time and they are in a tough spot basically the, the this uh, these big tech companies like uh, like amazon like uber they have raised the bar uh, really really high but uh, they are good news uh, the, the first uh, the 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 first uh, important thing here is that technology is here, is ready, and is widely available. So uh, we don't need to worry about how to do this, or about this black magic. So re even though real-time platforms are something new and are a big paradigm change compared to the to the more static world that we are used to work with, uh, it can be a little bit scary. Again, if you look at the market as an indicator, as a thermometer, we can see that the main tech players have introduced into his tech stack some type, some type of real-time platform. And even, uh, even better news is that a lot of these platforms are self-managed. Uh, that is a fundamental step for the adoption of this type of, of platforms because these uh, these platforms are really complex to manage. So unless you have these self-managed platforms, the, the adoption is going to be really, really tough. So in the first place, we have Confluent Cloud offering a self-managed Kafka platform. Uh, also, the main cloud providers have their own, uh, their own even streaming platform available as a service. Kinesis for, from Amazon, PoopSoup from Google Cloud, even Hubs from Azure. We also have streaming frameworks that allow to change data in real time, like Kafka Streams, Pulsar, Spark Streaming. And another really important piece uh, in this puzzle is this open source ecosystem of change data capture. Uh, we'll talk uh, later about this, uh, what change data capture is. But basically, uh, what C change data capture allows, or ch change data capture CDC, it allows to connect your database uh, system to an event platform. So you have these CDC connectors from Red Hat. This is a project called Debesium. And, and this is a really, really amazing project that uh, is, a, is a really is a facilitator of this kind of technologies. So I've only shown you a small sample of, of all the of all the, the existing uh, platforms and tools related to real time platforms. But in general, this is uh, all these technologies are a really good indicator of where things are going in the next years regarding uh, real time. Just a quick note for the sake of this talk, when I talk about real-time platforms, I'm talking about systems that allow the integration of data in real time. I also will refer during this presentation as streaming platforms or event platforms. It's, it's the same. Another really important piece is, uh, is the availability of high-quality training resources related to the fundamentals of, of the design and development on this, of these type of platforms. Of, uh, as we, I said before, event-driven systems, real-time systems, are a complete change of paradigm 
from the, the more static world of databases and, and batch processes. So not so long ago, they were a kind of, of like magic, even scary. You have all these events moving around in real time. You need to handle to handle errors. You need to make sure that all messages arrive to the to the target system. You need to care about scalability, replication. So it's a lot of things to take into account. So today we have a lot of literature based on real use cases and best uh, practices on how to design this kind of, of architectures. Also, these resources are really high quality and in a lot of cases are even free. The, the, the three resources, the, these three O'Reilly books are, are free. You can just uh, search Google and, and you can down, download it for, for free. So it's really amazing that all these, uh, these resources are, are spread and they're uh, available for free. So uh, this aspect is, for me, is key for the wide adoption of event-driven architectures. Uh, technology is necessary, but it's not sufficient. So things like Apache Kafka, Confluent Cloud, Kinesis uh, are not enough. You also need to know how to use them, and, and you need to, to have all this, uh, all this training, all these all this materials uh, available. So we are going to have a really quick look. So this is uh, even even streaming platforms are really complex, but I'm going to I'm going to uh, simplify them a lot so that you can all uh, get a picture of what they look like. So uh, I'm going to focus on Apache Kafka as an example, because it's the more mature technology for for implementing this kind of, of architectures. But all the concepts, you can apply the same for to Kinesis, PubSub, etc. So the main concept you have in an event real, in an event driven real time architecture is the event log. Event log, if you look at the picture, is this kind of uh, this kind of, of queue. So you have like this kind of uh, uh, this time picture. So you have uh, on top of the time uh, arrow, you have uh, this kind of, of queue. Uh, and basically, what the event log is is uh, is like a, the text log that you have in every application, but with the structured information. So in the in the log that you have in application, you have something like a date, and then you have some kind of text message. In this case, uh, this kind of log is a little bit more uh, more complex, and you have some kind of structured data like uh, an order, a user, etc. Basically, uh, something that comes from a database. Uh, a log is a really simple data structure, and the thing is that it's really, really fast because the only thing you can do with it is to append data. You cannot delete, you cannot uh, update data. The only thing that is that you can only add data at the end of it. Uh, and this makes this kind of a structure really, really fast. For instance, LinkedIn is managing more than 7 trillion messages per day with this Kataka platform. It's 7 trillion. So it's, this is a lot of messages. Uh, okay, we know what a log is, so let's go with events. Events is basically something that has happened, like an order that has been created, a user register, a movie watch it, etc. Something that that has happened. And uh, if you look at the middle, uh, basically, so you have the, the event log, you have events inside this event log. But you need to get events inside this event log, and then you also need to be able to get the events out. So for this, you have producers. Producers just write events in the log as they happen in real time, and they can be applications. For instance, application writing user events related to the activity of a user in a website. Uh, database events, for instance, insert, updates, etc. You can also have sensor events, for instance, a GPS sending car positions, etc. Uh, so this is producers. This is just things. Uh, it's just putting events on this event log. And then finally, you need to get the events out. So basically, you can have here, you can have some kind of processor. Uh, as an example, you could uh, uh, have a consumer getting things out of, of this event log, uh, a process checking credit card fraud uh, from, ev from payment events. This could be an example of a consumer. So basically, uh, this is really, really the basics, but this is the how an event-driven architecture looks like. I'm going to just show you a, a little example of this. This is uh, how 
an event is uh, driven architecture looks in the in uh, with real uh, sorry an example so this is a really simple example with a uh, an order system so at the left you have a database of orders and line items so basically orders in the middle you have apache kafka and you have these events so in this case events are orders so you have order one order two etc and on the right side you can have databases you can have different systems you can have a, a splunk uh, dashboard real-time dashboard elastic search snowflake mongodb etc basically what you have this this is that everything that gets inserted into the database in real time will be inserted in all these systems and you will be able to search in real time to see a dashboard in real time uh, to put your data in another system in real time etc so basically this is an example of the usage of uh, of an event driven system uh, as i told before for creating events from database changes we could just update all of our applications, but this could be really overkill. You need to update all the applications in our company so that when something happens in our database, they just write an event into the, our event log, but this would be overkill. So for this, for solving this problem, you have a technology called Change Data Capture that uh, automatically create creates events for every database event. So for instance, you can see that if you do an insert, you will have an insert event updated, uh, inserted into the event log. The same for updates, the same for delete. So this is uh, a technology that uh, enables uh, the adoption of this kind of platforms because it makes things, it, it makes life uh, much easier. CDC is basically existing for almost all, all known databases and there are commercial products for all databases like db2 oracle etc you also have this red hat project called the Vesium for implementing the cdc for a lot of open sources uh, open source databases like postgres mysql etc basically what cdc does is enable to free our data from our old systems and integrate it integrate them in real time with new ones this is uh, a real a really simple co uh, concept but it makes the life of people that are trying to implement this kind of systems much easier. Finally, I'm gonna, uh, I will show the strategy. Uh, how can you implement a strategy uh, from legacy to real time? How can this happen? Uh, basically, this is a process that takes many years and must be implemented carefully and in different stages. The first phase uh, of this process is uh, just replicating data to another systems. Basically, normally this happens to a, systems, uh, to a system in the cloud to perform some of the queries that used to live in the legacy system. In the legacy systems, one standard way to extract data from our legacy system is, as uh, we we've talked, change data capture that allows the faster implementation. So this is phrase, the first phase is just getting some data and make this data available to query. The second stage would be a bidirectional replication of data between legacy and new systems in the cloud. So meaning that the new system in the cloud is not only uh, is not only read only, but is also accepting new data. So this would be just uh, all systems and new systems living together. And the final stage basically is just getting rid of the legacy systems and having all the systems living in the cloud. Normally, these systems would be developed using real-time platforms, using microservice architectures, communicating through, through events. And uh, these new systems uh, also allow the implementation of some of the functionalities that we've, uh, that Jose has been showing, like uh, in Uber, Netflix, etc that require the use of a real-time platform, like real-time prices, real-time recommendations, etc. Jose? If, 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 we, if we have to summarize, uh, keep this message, the world moves in real time, and it is time, it is high time, in fact, that your digital platform follows. So at Paradigma, we will be more than happy to help you because that is what we do best. And nothing else, thank you very much for your time and feel free to contact me or Ruben if you have any questions. Okay, thanks, thanks so much for this, uh, for this interesting presentation. We have only one, one question trying to, 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 to point in, in, in a, uh, a question that we have already 
talked uh, today that it's uh, biases, biases in business decisions. So how these uh, these platforms, how these uh, real time uh, platforms uh, can manage with this uh, bias, with this, these problems that can have an impact in in, in daily basics in in in, uh, in a business. I don't know who, which one of you prefer uh, take the, the question. Ruben, you want to take it? Or let me yeah. Know. Yeah, basically what we have uh, taken into account that uh, real-time platforms are, uh, are there just to, uh, to transmit events to, to is, they are like a pipeline. So basically what they are doing is just, you are connecting a pipeline to, to all your systems. Basically, you can use these systems, among other things, you can use for just integrating with new systems, with uh, you can also create dashboards, indexing services, etc. And of course, one of the systems that you can integrate these uh, these platforms is with artificial intelligence. Uh, anyway, the these real time platforms basically they are uh, let's say uh, neutral. So basically, what they do is the data you are putting in one systems, I'm gonna put it in another one. They are not the, the pieces that are analyzing data. So basically. Uh, we could say that they uh, they are just like a transport mechanism to uh, to just make data available to artificial intelligence systems. But basically, they are they are not the ones that should uh, should be careful with with data biases. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's only the tube. It's, it's only the, the, the exactly. connection. So thanks. Exactly. So thanks both for for this uh, presentation. We learned a lot about uh, real time digital platforms. So so thank you. Thank, thank you. you.